Hey there, hello. Thank you, Chris Tara. All right, I'm gonna turn the mic over to you and you're mm -hmm. welcome to get started. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great honor to present the Republic of Korea's view on space threats at the fifth summit for space sustainability. Let me start by briefly overviewing the Republic of Korea's space activities and plans. As an emerging spacefaring nation, Korea began its development of satellites in the mid 1990s and is increasing its range of space development programs from satellites to space exploration. With a 30 year history of space development, Korea now operates various satellites ranging from low Earth orbit to geostationary orbit. Last year, we successfully launched our homegrown space launch vehicle and became the seventh country to explore the moon with the launch of Korea Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter. Based on recent technological achievements, the Republic of Korea aims to continue space exploration and advance its space industry to drive robust economic growth. Our ambitious space goals, as well as our focus on promoting the participation and engagement of the private sector in space activities, are well illustrated in the Space Economy Roadmap and fourth basic plan for space development promotion for 2023 to 2027 announced last year. I would also like to highlight that the fourth basic plan, which serves as a comprehensive strategy document for Korea's space activities, highlights Korea's capabilities to protect its space system as one of the five key objectives. This is the first time that this aspect has been reflected in our strategy document. As the Republic of Korea's space development program progresses and its exploration activities expand, it fully recognizes the immeasurable importance of maintaining a safe, secure, and sustainable space environment. For us, these principles of safety, security, and sustainability are not merely rhetorical aspirations, but realities, as they are for every space actor. This explains our national position towards destructive direct ascent anti-satellite missile testing. We believe that such testing itself is a direct threat to space assets, and the long-lived space debris created during the testing poses a great risk and threat to space safety, security, and sustainability. This is why we expressed our concern regarding the ASAT missile testing in November 2021 and welcomed the U.S. decision not to conduct destructive DASAT missile testing in April 2022. Now, I would like to go into further details of the Republic of Korea's decision to join the commitment following the US, Canada, New Zealand, Japan, and Germany. Since the announcement from the US in April 2022, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs convened several interagency meetings to discuss our national position on joining the commitment. We examined how this will affect our and our adversaries' capabilities and behaviors. As you all know, the Republic of Korea has never conducted such testing, yet we cannot exclude the possibility of being the victim of such testing. We also considered our real need to protect our space assets and activities. We also looked at the voluntary nature of this commitment and how this will affect the shaping of global norms. Korea's firm position towards a safe, secure, and sustainable space environment, and our aspiration to develop norms of responsible behavior in outer space facilitated the process. The Republic of Korea was one of the main sponsors of the United Nations General Assembly Resolution on reducing space threats through norms, rules, and principles of responsible behaviors in 2020 and 2021 and actively participated in the open-ended working group. This experience has helped the relevant ministries form a common understanding of the dire necessity of developing space norms. Ultimately, we reached a whole of government common understanding 
the destructive DASN missile testing is one of the most evident and urgent threats to our space assets and activities. It can have an impact on any asset of any country for long periods of time, as highlighted by multiple previous speakers. Korea believes that it is in our national interest to develop norms on destructive DASN missile testing to clarify that such behavior will not be deemed acceptable within the international community. Following this logic, the Republic of Korea joined the commitment in October 2022 and sponsored the United Nations resolution to call on other states to join the commitment. We are pleased to see that this resolution received huge support from the international community. With 165 states, among 177 present, voting for the resolution. We understand that other states which voted for the resolution but have not yet joined the commitment need some time to thoroughly review the domestic effect of this commitment. In this regard, Korea is also making efforts to raise awareness of the danger and risks posed by ACID testing including sponsoring the Secure World Foundation to develop an infographic dedicated to ACET activities and their impact on space sustainability. We invite all states to join this commitment and safeguard our future together. The Republic of Korea firmly believes that the growth in the number of states supporting and subscribing to this commitment will positively impact the safety, security, and sustainability of the space environment. And the benefits will affect every state, regardless of whether it is space-faring or not. Once again, we encourage other states to join us before it's too late. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hiren, for that call to action for governments and other entities around the world, the infallible logic that was used by the Republic of Korea to create this policy and, and enforce it with for, for themselves and, and their perspective on how it makes everyone in the world safer is something that we at Secure World could not agree more with. So thank you again very much.